Early Childhood Stanley Fofara was born in 1949 in San Francisco to parents without any entertainment industry connections. Nevertheless, his mother was determined to turn her sons into stars. When Stanley's elder brother Lucas, Tiger Fafara, showed a flair for performance, she pushed him into the world of acting first at age seven. He started landing small roles in commercials and TV westerns. Riding on her son's initial success, Stanley's mother brought the brothers to a large open casting call for a new suburban family sitcom called Leave It to Beaver in 1957. While Tiger took the lead to audition for one of Beaver's friends, casting directors were unexpectedly drawn to eight-year-old Stanley's natural charm and stage presence. Though quiet and letting his older brother take charge until then, the young boy clearly had talent that shined brighter on that day. He landed the recurring role of Hubert Whitey Whitney, one of Beaver's mischievous best friends. Tiger was also signed on to play another schoolmate, the nerdy Tui Brown. And so began parallel acting journeys for the Fafara brothers. Stanley's childhood combined two exciting worlds. When not filming, he attended public schools near his suburban LA home. But the structure and rules that govern typical 1950s boyhoods for his peers did not always apply on chaotic TV and movie sets. Surrounded by adult directors, producers, cameramen, and so on, Stanley grew up faster than his classmates. While perhaps stressful for some kids, most child stars get a thrill out of their unusual lifestyles. The opportunity to play make-believe combined with time off from school is extremely stimulating. Stanley took to acting easily and with great aplomb through nearly six continuous years on Leave It to Beaver. Whitey in Leave It to Beaver from 1957 through 63, Stanley charmed American audiences as Hubert Whitey Whitney on Leave it to Beaver. Set in suburban Renwood, the show provided amusing and heartwarming glimpses into 1950s middle-class family life through the eyes of Curious Beaver and his neighborhood gang of friends. Stanley's Whitey was a prominent member of this group with his blonde hair, cheerful disposition, and bent towards harmless mischief. Episode plots often involved Beaver and Whitey's schoolboy adventures and misadventures, joining the school football team, starting a stand-up comedy act, earning money to buy a toy boat, and so forth. Whitey pulled Beaver into crazy schemes, acted as his partner in crime for various hijinks, much to the exasperation of family members like Ward Cleaver, Beaver's strict but patient father, and even teachers. But Beaver could always count on kind-hearted Whitey to support him even when they ended up in trouble together. Through it all, Stanley delivered a scene-stealing, subtle comedic performance that earned Whitey a special place as one of America's favorite TV sons. Besides the main family show storylines, the producers created a rich world of friends and neighborhood characters. This included Stanley's own brother, Tiger, playing the shy, bespectacled Tui Brown, one of older brother Wally's friends. For about three years, the Fafara brothers got to act alongside each other, bringing to life two iconic boys in this nostalgic 1950s universe centered around Beaver's slow journey growing up. It was great fun for two normal brothers plunged rather unexpectedly into regular acting roles at a young age. Leave it to Beaver ended in 1963 after a successful six-year run and 234 episodes. The show left an indelible mark on American pop culture and ushered Jerry Mathers and Stanley Fafara into national stardom as archetypes of innocence, warmth, and humor against the backdrop of post-war suburban America. Post Leave It to Beaver Struggles the end of the show signaled major upheaval for lead child actors Jerry Mathers and Stanley Fafara. At just 14, their lives had revolved around the show for many years. Now in their early teens, both boys struggled without the show's structure and attention. Stanley attended North Hollywood High School after the show ended, but could not adjust easily to the regular school system after years on studio sets shaped by TV production rules. 
he yearned for his Leave it to Beaver days and associated fame perks. Unable to find substantial acting roles after age 14, Stanley felt the industry had discarded him. He began drinking heavily, moved briefly with popular band Paul Revere and the Raiders, and began using recreational drugs. Lacking parental support to steady life after stardom ended, he floundered through his mid-teen years, unable to replicate his early acting success. Like his co-star Jerry, who also suffered adjustment troubles, Stanley had not built skills to transition into regular adulthood. This lack of counseling for washed-up child celebrities during that era amplified struggles. He clung unsuccessfully to Hollywood fame remnants before his family urged a move to his sister's home in Jamaica. But Stanley continued substance abuse and could not sustain real-world jobs like painting. The former child star who had supported his family through his steady acting checks five years back was now aimless and addicted at barely 20 years old. Later Life and Downward Spiral Returning to LA in 1972, after years adrift, his life deteriorated steadily into a tragic sequence of addiction, petty crime, incarceration, and homelessness. He got married briefly in 1972, but it ended in divorce soon after. Unable to resurrect his acting career, Stanley resorted to dealing drugs as a means of income still chasing the high life fame once afforded. Throughout the 70s, he developed severe alcoholism and other substance dependencies, once confessing to a reporter that addiction troubles began as early as age 14, right after Leave it to Beaver ended. Despite growing up in a suburban middle-class comfort through steady earnings, the former child star was penniless and directionless just over a decade after his hit show ended. By the early 80s, his addiction troubles culminated in arrests for multiple pharmacy burglaries to fuel his narcotic needs. His parents bailed him after the seventh offense, but Stanley was sentenced to a year in prison following another burglary. Life didn't improve much after serving his sentence. He went back and forth between brief periods of employment, like construction or restaurant work, and returning inevitably to familiar vices. He relocated to Portland with a girlfriend in the mid-80s, only finding temp jobs between emerging himself and the drug underworld again. Heroin addiction, with attendant physical decline, followed through the late 80s and 90s. Almost four decades removed from Leave it to Beaver, he was now an obscure fallen star. The tragic end and gravestone there never was. After years of turmoil, he experienced a late-life epiphany in 95 and worked to conquer his substance abuse issues. He sought help at a Portland addiction recovery house, achieving sobriety for the first time in decades. He also reconnected with his daughter Tanya, an infant granddaughter, but it was revealed Stanley had contracted Hep C during his heroin-addled years, which gradually deteriorated his health. He spent his final sober days quietly in a subsidized single-occupancy apartment in downtown Portland. On September 20th, 2003, he passed away suddenly from complications during hernia surgery, coincidentally on his 54th birthday. In a tragic turn of events, the struggling actor couldn't afford a simple headstone after his death. Attendees of the small funeral passed around collection plates to cover the cost. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Stanley Fafara? Let us know in the comments section below.